Uh, guys, so I've done a stupid thing. It was a brave thing, but it was a stupid thing. I installed the latest Mac OS Tahoe public beta on my only Mac. Because unlike most tech YouTubers, I don't have a warehouse full of spare machines. No, this is my daily driver. So yeah, if this suddenly cuts to black, send help. This video is about all the stuff you need to know about when that upgrade arrives, which is just around the corner. If you're thinking about following it in my footsteps here, before you do anything else, back up your Mac, iCloud, Time Machine, a USB stick from 2009, whatever you've got, because beta usually means bugs. Now, if you still want to live dangerously, to install the public beta, all you need to do is open system settings, go to general, software update, and then beta updates, sign in with your Apple ID, and then select Mac OS 26 public beta. Next, grab a coffee you're in for quite a ride. The first thing you'll notice is the design. So Mac OS kind of went to a spa day and came back much softer. Menus are all rounded, pop-ups are all rounded, finder icons got flipped colors with the blue face and a new attitude. The bin or the trash can icon is a bit different, it's a bit edgier. There's also a new cursor which is fatter and also a bit rounder. Even the menu bar is fully transparent now, a bit like it's floating gently above your desktop. And folders, you can now tint them and add emoji, although it doesn't show up in the favorites bar in Finder, just in the main Finder browser. Let's talk about Liquid Glass. This is the new design language that is coming to all your Apple devices in this year's releases. Everything is kind of hyper translucent. Personally, even though it does remind me of Windows Vista, I think it looks stunning. If it gets too much for you though, you can just head to accessibility and display and then just hit reduce transparency and voila, it's back to the way you remembered it. Next, let's look at Control Center and there are some big updates here too. It's all fully customizable. You can add, remove and search for toggles in this little pop-up menu. You can also resize things. You can right click and choose small, medium and large depending on how big you want your controls to be. And then if things get too crowded in here, it'll spill onto a second page, a Bit like on your iPhone or an iPad home screen. There's a bunch of brand new commands for Control Center, such as a toggle to lock your screen, a stage manager switch, there's screenshots and screen recording shortcuts, accessibility options, and there's even a quick note access for all those chaotic brain dumps. By the way, if you like this wallpaper, it's part of my new haze pack, which is available right now on my shopping shelf right below. Next up, let's have a moment of silence for Launchpad, which with Mac OS Tahoe is officially dead and buried. If you do the finger gesture on a trackpad or hit the key that would usually get you to launch pad, you'll find a creatively named new space called applications. So with applications, you get suggested apps at the top, followed by your entire app collection organized into categories like productivity, photo and video, and existential dread probably. You can also search too, but this is a really nice way to get where you need to go. For me, I tend to just use command and space to open Spotlight to get to an app anyway, but you know, you've always got this as an option now too. Now, talking about Spotlight, before upgrading, I'd always thought Spotlight was one of the best and most powerful things about having a Mac. Well, with the Tahoe upgrade, it's now obscenely powerful and it's got loads of new tricks, such as showing relevant results faster. That's thanks to having on-device AI. You can break them down by file type and run actions such as sending a message, creating a calendar event, and even execute terminal commands. Once Spotlight is open, and by the way, can we just give it up for that new open animation? How nice is that? You can follow up to make it much easier to find things. If you type command and one, you can automatically switch to apps. Command and two will do files. Command and three will go to actions, and then command and four will give you your clipboard history. Yeah. Mac OS now has a built-in clipboard manager. It remembers up to eight hours of copied items, just click one to recopy, except passwords for obvious reasons. I definitely encourage you to have a play with this as it's definitely one of the best things about the Tahoe upgrade. Now, before we go any further, there's one more thing I always recommend before upgrading to a beta, and honestly, before connecting to anything remotely sketchy online. And that is install a VPN like Surfshark who are sponsoring this video. You know how Doctor Strange just kind of waves his finger 
fingers and opens a portal to another part of the planet. That's basically what a VPN does, but for your device. A Surfshark VPN lets you click a button and teleport your Mac or iPhone or anything else to over 100 locations hosted by over 3,000 servers. If you want access to Australia's massive Netflix library, boom, done. If you want cheaper flights by pretending you're in Turkey, easy. Even Doctor Strange would be like, yeah, okay. That's pretty magic. And it's not just about digital teleportation, it keeps you protected on sketchy public Wi-Fi. Airports, cafes, hotel lobbies, places where your data is just floating around like a free buffet. Because if you're not using a VPN, people can see what you're doing online, even in private browsing. And yeah, that kind of private browsing too. I've worked with Surfshark to get you an extra four months free and a 30 day money back guarantee. And it works with all your devices. Hit the link below or scan the code on screen to get started and become the Sorcerer Supreme of super secure screen time shenanigans. And I promise that didn't just take me 11 takes to say properly. So back to Mac OS Tahoe now. And whilst we've been able to answer calls from our Macs for a while, thanks to continuity, the phone app for Mac is now official. You can use this to do all sorts, such as screening unknown callers. I've been using this quite a bit recently and it's super handy. They kind of have to leave a message which pops up on the screen so you can see who they are before you decide to answer or not. There's also hold assist, which call you back when you've been placed on hold. There's live voicemail, which gives you a live transcript as they're leaving you a message. And of course you can simply make calls. There's also a handful of changes in apps that you already know, such as messages. Here you can send polls and reactions, but only if everyone's using Tahoe and the latest version of iOS. OS, otherwise you'll be shouting into a void and wondering why no one's voted on the takeaway tonight. There's reminders, which has AI auto categorization lists into topics like work, groceries, and more. So you don't forget what needs doing. Photos has got a completely redesigned user interface. And the good news is it's much, much less cluttered than the last year's release. There's better sidebar customization too. So you can pin media types for quick access to things like screenshots and favorite people. The music app has also had a bit of an overhaul and finally doesn't look like it was designed in 2004. And Preview has got a new icon, toolbar, and a dark mode PDF reader. Then there's the journal app. I always thought it was a bit odd that Apple released a journaling app for iPhone first, but it's finally available on Mac. And of course it syncs across all your other Apple devices. You can add thoughts and photos and locations and voice memos. A neat feature there actually is your voice memos get transcribed for you. It'll also track locations that you've been to to prompt for new journal entries. So this is perfect for aspiring novelists, overthinkers, and people like me who are still trying to remember what they did last week. Elsewhere, the games app now comes to Mac. This brings together games from Apple Arcade, the rest of your gaming library, and features like Play Together, where you can quickly initiate games with your contacts. You know, it's not Steam, but it's not bad either. There's also a magnifier app where you can connect to your phone and use it to zoom in on things like presentations or small text if you've got any kind of accessibility needs. There are lots of changes to Safari too. Overall, it's a bit cleaner and faster. The title bar color adapts to web pages, which is a nice little trick. And the reader function lets you hide annoying items from any page with a simple click. Plus picture in picture works a lot better if you're watching content in your browser while you're using other apps. Importantly, tabs have got a new look too as Apple have removed the compact tabs layout, which is a bit odd as it kind of contradicts all their messages about getting the OS out of the way, but it was also a bit buggy. So they probably just decided to kill it off rather than fix it. And there are a bunch of new accessibility and privacy upgrades, which are always really good to see. And one that I've really welcomed is the vehicle motion cues, which has made its way over from iPad and iPhone. Now, I suffer quite badly with travel sickness and I found this has really helped me on things like train journeys when I'm trying to get work done on my Mac. Shortcuts has also had a big lift, which will let you do things like trigger automations when files change, when displays connect, etc. You can also now add ChatGBT to your shortcuts. Plus use shortcuts to generate images using Apple's unique style in Apple intelligence and also quick adjustings with writing. I do need to dive deeper into shortcuts as it feels a bit like Apple's best kept secret for power users. The problem is it's just not that accessible. I was kind of hoping they would add a function using Apple intelligence that allows you to describe the shortcut that you want, you know, like take the 5,000 entries in my day one journal app and then paste them into the Apple journal app. But that is not possible. 
Uh, I guess a guy can dream. I'm just going to carry on doing it manually for now. In conclusion, Mac OS Tahoe is definitely the biggest update in years. It's sleek, fast, and surprisingly stable for a beta, but it is still a beta. So if you value your sanity or if you've got important deadlines to hit, maybe sit this one out until a few months after it's out in the real world. If you are diving in though, let me know which feature blew your mind and which one made you want to throw your Mac into the sea. And if you enjoyed this, check out this rundown of 12 accessories that you can use to supercharge your MacBook while you wait for Tahoe to arrive. See you next time.